everybody, it's Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine, and I'm sitting here today in Charlie's Fly Box, and I'm going to twist up a new pattern that I came up with last year called a nine pound hammer. I've been working on this one for a couple seasons now, and it started to work pretty well for me, so you should stay tuned, and I'll twist one up for you. All right, today we're going to tie a fly called a nine pound hammer that I came up with uh, at the behest of a couple of friends of mine, uh, Marty Minoni up in Cody, Wyoming from Wyoming Trout Guides, and uh, Ian Meter. Um, from here in Colorado, both had asked me about a crawdad pattern to fish under an indicator or under a big dry fly um, in rivers, and uh, this is sort of what we came up with as a group project. Um, this is uh, uh, really just a variation of a bugger. You can see it's a, a pretty simple fly, um, and with all that dressing on there, it's a little hard to tell, but it is tied on a jig hook. It's a TMCO 708 jig hook. Um, so the hook uh, rides hook point up. Um, this is a good one to dead drift under a, under a fly, although I have stripped it and kind of twitched the dry a bit, um, and it does work that way as well. But um, let's get into tying it. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start off with, um, I'm tying a size 6 here, but I'll tie these down to 10s. Um, and I've got a 4.6 millimeter uh, slotted tungsten bead on here. I'm going to slide that up to the hook eye. Now, uh, keep in mind you can uh, you can tie these with a variety of different size beads. You know, it just depends on on how much uh, how how much speed there is to the water, how much depth, uh, how many weeds there are. Uh, you know, we found um, even unweighted versions work pretty well, or very small beads on them. Um, so it doesn't always have to be a big bead. But um, I'm going to tell you the the kind of gray blue version that we came up with, and this this version, uh, which is what I showed you there, um, sort of imitates the. Uh, the molting stage um, you know, of a crawdad after it's molted its shell and uh, before the hard shell has grown back in. Um, so I'm going to tie you that version. And typically I'll just use black thread for this, but since I'm using a black background, I'm going to use some blue 6 Um This is Uni 6 um which is, you can actually see on there, 136 denier. Uh, so fairly fairly coarse thread. 3 out monocord will work fine also. 8 out Vivas would work fine. Um, but I'm going to take this thread and start it just up here behind this bead. I'm going to build up a little wedge of thread, and I want to get that bead set up on that upright. You can see um, that that's not a uh, not a 90 degree or, or 60 degree jig hook. It's about a 40 degree jig hook, so um, and it's got a flat eye, so it's a little bit different than than what you'd think of a, as a conventional jig hook. But I made a little thread dam behind that that bead, and then just a thread base back to the bend. And at this spot, I'm going to take a marabou feather here, and I'm going to do a stacked tail. Um, and so what I want to do with that is um, I'm going to stack three different colors of marabou. And, and I like that um, in that it's pretty variegated and mottled. But what you have to keep in mind is you don't want to use too much of any one color because you can really overdo the tail. Uh, so what I want to do there is I'm going to take a little clump of gray. This is kind of a slate gray color. And I'll just peel that off the, the stem of the feather. I'll measure it about a shank length long, and I'll tie that in at the bend, and maybe even go around the bend a bit. You have to keep in mind that um, this fly is going to ride hook point up, so that's actually going to be the top. Um, and then I'm going to take just a little pinch of purple. You know, looking at these uh, molting crayfish, they've got some different colors on them. Um, they sometimes even have a little bit of orange in them, uh, a little bit of red, so uh, don't feel like you're locked into only this color. But I'm going to take just a few strands, just a little bit of purple, and I'm going to lay that in on top of the gray at the same length. And I'll bind that down. And then I'll take some blue. Let me get a better feather here. And take a little clump of the blue marabou. and bundle that up. And that's about the same size as the first bunch of gray, so you can see the purple is just sort of an accent. And I'll lay that in and catch that with a few turns. And again, I want to wrap down over all three, just slightly around the bend there, to kind of blend that together. And then I'll lift all these butt ends up, and just bring my thread up to just behind the bead, and then tie those butt ends down again. Um, the reason I do that is it just builds some bulk on the shank and keeps the shank an even diameter. Um, it'll save me from having to use quite so much dubbing when we get to that point. I'll cut those butt ends out. And then I'm going to take uh, two strands of blue flashaboo. And I'm going to leave my thread hanging just in front of the hook point here. And I'll catch these at the center of their length. And I'm going to wrap back over them, 
keeping that bunch on the far side of the hook and then I'll pull the other half along the near side of the hook and I'll trim those about 25% longer than the tail. You can see the tail's fairly sparse with just a couple little strands of flash there. And then I'm going to add in a couple of uh, Drew Chacon's Micro Crusher legs and these are uh, purple and blue. Uh, it just kind of fits in with the color scheme of this fly. And I'm going to tie these in the same way that I did that flash. I'm going to catch them at the center of their length in the middle of the hook and I'll kind of pull the far side over to the far side of the shank and then the near side here to the near side and bind those in place. And I usually leave those kind of hanging long. Just for the moment, I'll clip them back here in my material spring. I'll trim those when I'm, when I'm all done. My flashy boo's being a little crazy there, so I'll clean that up a bit. Now for the body on this, you know, this is one of those flies that I, I had big plans for. And, uh, you know, as I got into it, it really just became a a dressed up bugger and I'm, I'm the first to admit that but the the chassis of a bugger is good for a fly like this so I'm going to use a grizzly feather here as the body hackle and we're going to use a, a CDL hen saddle feather for the carapace but I'm going to start off with this this grizzly sa saddle feather here and this is going to help us build some bulk in the body some volume and diameter um, but but without a lot of weight we're not going to have to build up a lot of a lot of dubbing to kind of even this out so I'm going to tie that in at the at the bend back there by the tip end. And then I'm going to take a little bit of lavender, UV lavender ice dubbing. And again, you know, the colors, um, I tie a, a thin mint colored variation that's uh, sort of uh, olive, olive black and brown for the tail uh, with a peacock dubbing colored body and a brown hackle. Um, and then I tie a rusty brown uh, colored version. Um, with rusty brown everything, uh, you know, brown hackle, uh, brown overbody, and a, a rusty brown and orange tail. Um, so you can you can alter these colors to match whatever you need to. Um, when I'm going to build a big body on a fly like this, um, what I want to do is I'm going to use a, a technique called direct dubbing, and I'm trying to get this up on the screen. So I've here, let's hold this in here, kind of get it over here. There you go. Now you can see it. You can see I've just started to twist the dubbing down, but I've got this clump back here in my fingers that's loose. <clears throat> Once I've got it twisted on, I'm just going to start wrapping. And you can see that dubbing, each time I go around the hook, that dubbing twists around the thread. And I'll just work forward to just behind the bead. I want to leave myself a little bit of space there behind the bead. But you can see how quickly I built a, a fairly big shaggy body on that fly. Um, that direct dubbing is a, a great way to build a, a thick body, especially with a coarse long fiber dubbing like, like ice dubbing. So now I'm going to plumber my feather. But before I do, I want to fold these fibers. Um, so I'm going to start at the top and work down toward the base, folding, folding these fibers back toward the, the bend of the hook. And I usually wet my fingers. I just lick them a little bit, wet my fingers a bit to crease those fibers back. You can see I can kind of work up and down to crease those fibers to the rear. Um, this feather's got a fairly thick stem, so I don't have to be too, uh, too gingerly with it. Uh, but if you've got a thin stem feather, you might want to take it a little easy, especially down there toward the tip end. So I'm going to start to wrap this just evenly spaced. I don't want to overdo it, just like you would on a bugger. And I've left some bare stem at the front, so I've got a good clean tie off there. Tie that off with a few turns. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to crush that stem down into the dubbing. I'm just going to pinch the whole body of the fly. And you can see that sweeps the hackle back a bit but it also buries that stem down in the dubbing so it's not quite so exposed. You can use a dubbing brush here to kind of pick out some of that dubbing and make it a little shaggier. As you fish the fly, it'll end up that way anyway. But I like to just kind of use the brush to sweep everything back. The reason I use the brush more than my fingers is so that I don't end up with the uh, hook point stuck in my finger. So once I'm to this point, I'm gonna take, this is a uh, Kingfisher Blue CDL Coq de Leon Hen Saddle Feather. Um, you can see these are big, wide feathers, really nice modeling on them. Um, and this is going to form the carapace of our, of our crawdad. So I'm going to cut the butt end off. And then I'm going to come in here and just trim some little bristles on either side of the stem there. And I'm going to tie this feather in with the inside toward the hook, just by the butt end here. And I want to anchor that down good and tight here. You can see I've left a little bit of space there behind the bead on purpose. And I'll lift this feather up, and this is the inside of the feather that you're seeing. 
and I'll fold it the same way. Now these feathers are a lot softer than that, that saddle feather we use for the uh, for the body hackle, so these fold a little bit easier. But basically this is just like a big wet fly style collar. And I want those fibers to come all the way back. You can see how they extend all the way back to the bin, maybe even slightly past. That's one of the nice things about this big uh, CDL hen feather. Uh, is it's got the length to encompass the, the body of the fly, and that's going to form the carapace. Um, you have to kind of use your imagination a little bit on this to get the idea of how this is going to form like a crawdad shell. So I'll sweep that back, just get a couple turns on there to anchor that down. Um, and you can come in with your brush again just to kind of smooth everything out. Now this would be the, the claw end of the crawdad. Um, give you an idea from there how that's going to form our shell around the body. And then we're going to add a couple more legs. This is uh, the same purple and blue micro crusher legs. And I'm going to tie these in just behind the the bead here and kind of pin a couple of them along the far side and I'll fold the other two along the near side and pin those down with a few wraps. And I want those sort of widespread, I want those to dangle and move. Um, this is not a fly so much made to, to be retrieved as it is to be drifted, so we want some movement out of that. I'll just clip those back in my material spring for the moment so that they're out of the way. And then I'm going to cover this little neck here um, just with another small pinch of that same dubbing. And I'll just put this on in the, in the normal way, just a tight little noodle. And we're, we are going to brush this out, but I want to put it on pretty tightly. And I might want to overdo it a little bit because when I brush it out, it'll lose some of its some of its volume. And you can see how I can sort of tame that collar down with those wraps of dubbing. And as I run out of dubbing, I want to be right up behind the bead. And then I'll come in with my whip finisher and just let the wraps of the whip finish slide off the back of the bead and sort of sink underneath that that dubbing collar. So now I can trim my legs and my antennas. And I like to leave the legs kind of long. Trying to get you a measurement here. I usually cut them under the vise, but I'm going to say just short of the end of the tail. I'm going to try not to cut anything that doesn't need cutting. And then the antenna just a little bit, you know, again, 25% longer than the than the tail. Um, but I don't want to cut these all to the same length, so I'm going to kind of come in and cut these at random lengths, just so it's a little bit more broken up. And the idea being that we've got sort of a crawdad silhouette. Uh, we've got the right colors, um, you know, especially when the fly is sort of slicked down in the water. You can kind of see where his shell would be, um, you know, on the claws back here at the back end. So it takes a little imagination, but uh, a lot of the the best flies have that uh, the, you know they don't they don't, don't immediately appear as what you think they should um, but they look like that to the fish so I'm gonna brush all that back and kind of get them swept back and that's our nine pound hammer that's uh, been a fun one I fished this up on uh, on the bighorn in Wyoming uh, this last summer uh, with Marty um, we caught a lot of nice fish on it there's some big fish in there and you know as we've been sort of experimenting with this pattern I've been fishing it in other places as well and it's surprising how many how many rivers have a pretty good population of crawdads so um, it's something not to be uh, not to be forgotten about also a good carp fly smaller bead obviously so you don't bomb it on their head but um, this can be a really good carp fly as well so that's our nine pound hammer I hope you enjoyed it uh, twist some up get some materials um, sit down and get to work and uh, be ready for the summer Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time around. Take care.